Cameras from around the world record what's considered an international event. Rain-soaked children and well-wishers wait in Newport to welcome Keiko to his new home. The killer whale has become an international symbol, a cause for animal advocates, touched by his story and his plight, made public after the movie Free Willy. When people figured out um, that he wasn't really free, as in the movie, they wanted to do something to help him, and that story's just been progressing for years, and it's just coming to a culmination now. It's building to a real crescendo. Keiko spent 15 of his last 17 years in captivity, the last 10 here at this Mexico City amusement park where his health has gone downhill. He's 2,000 pounds underweight, he has skin lesions, and in spite of the performances which have delighted Mexican crowds, his trainers say he's lethargic. Trainers at his new home say that's about to change. They'll be working with him constantly all day long. They actually want to keep him a lot more active than he is in Mexico City down there between his shows. He basically just floats on top of the pool, kind of lazing around. He's a pretty uh, lazy, bored whale, so we're not going to let him be bored here. Keiko's days of performing are over. In Oregon, he'll be taught how to hunt, how to take care of himself, in the hopes he might someday be freed. But even the optimists say it's a long shot. We don't know if it's possible or not. It's the first time it's ever going to be tried, and we hope it's a success. If not, Keiko will have a great home here for the rest of his life. Keiko touched down in Oregon just before 3 this afternoon as UPS workers unloaded their precious three and a half tons of cargo. Thousands of people lined the streets of Newport for a glimpse at their new celebrity neighbor. I'm waiting to see my sweetheart, my darling, my precious Keiko. And though he couldn't exactly be seen, Keiko's motorcade drew cheers. We just want to see the whale come by. Really cool. He's famous. He's coming to a, new, a better place for him too. We're going to try and help him out. Getting him out of his travel harness took some time, but after nearly an hour of maneuvering, Keiko entered his new, improved, watery world. He seemed to take right away to the new surroundings. The next step is to nurse him back to health. You can see he has skin lesions. Plus, Keiko is 2,000 pounds underweight. Doctors here can't believe they have a chance to treat the star of Free Willy. The number of people around the world that have, have been brought into the plight of Keiko. It just makes us feel an incredible sense of accomplishment. And we're just, you know, I, I think we're just numb right now, but, but we feel like we've, we've really done something special for this animal and hopefully through that for the way people view all marine animals. This particular marine animal seems to have a lot going for him. As he leaps out of the water, it's almost as if Keiko knows he's finally headed home after nearly two decades in captivity. Keiko was only two in 1979 when he was plucked from the waters off Iceland. Now he's going back. The prime minister made it official after a year of negotiating with the foundation set up to make Free Willy truly free. We're all very pleased. I feel as though the staff and I have had our foot nailed to the gas pedal and our hand on the emergency brake for the past month or so waiting for an answer. Beverly Hughes is president of the Free Willy Keiko Foundation. She says that the emergency brake is now off for good. Between now and the beginning of September, activity around Keiko's pen in Newport will be feverish. 450 different activities must take place to ready Keiko and Keiko's Bay pen in Iceland. Keiko's trainers take measurements of his blubber density, information that'll tell them how he's doing once he's moved from here. It's a tight time schedule. Construction nearly round the clock in Iceland, hard training in Newport. All must be in readiness in less than three months. So we know that if we can't accomplish this by a certain date in September, then we must wait until spring. And says Beverly Hughes, even though Keiko is moving one step closer to freedom, it doesn't assure he'll one day swim the open ocean again. We are only moving him to another captive situation, so there is no proof right now. We're just going to move him to a better, it's been a wonderful life here, we're going to enhance that one more time. This monumental day for Keiko started like any other with a routine workout. Trainers say the unsuspecting Keiko eagerly swam into his medical pen and his trainers easily slipped a sling around him. His journey had begun. Keiko's covered in ointment to help keep him wet. Trainers give every attention to detail and safety. They keep him cool, dumping buckets of ice into his temporary tank. 
Although this is goodbye to Oregon's beloved whale, the Free Willy Foundation says the Oregon Coast Aquarium should be proud. This whale, uh, when he arrived in Newport, uh, was uh, relatively in relatively poor health and uh, uh, for instance, he could only hold his breath for about three minutes when he arrived. Today, he can hold his breath for almost 20 minutes. So he's a dramatically different whale. He's healthier, he's bigger, and we wish him all the luck in the world going to Iceland. Not only has Keiko's health improved well in Oregon, his fame has as well. As the caravan moved out of the Oregon Coast Aquarium, Keiko's fans say farewell. Then Keiko's caravan heads to the Newport Airport. Inside his 28-foot by 8-foot tank, affectionately called his cradle, Keiko is surrounded by his trainers. Five of them will move with him to Iceland. Keiko's transportation to Iceland is an enormous C-17. This free willy operation is arguably the most money spent on an animal, at least $12 million so far. But the Free Willy Foundation says what it stands for is priceless. It is uh, really showing the best side of the humankind. We're going into phase two, which means we have succeeded. The huge Air Force C-17 cargo plane with Keiko aboard landed at just before 3 a.m. Pacific time, 10 a.m. in Jaime, Iceland. The landing was rough, the plane blew tires, but the 9,050 pound precious cargo handled the flight just fine. Fully an hour and 15 minutes later, the killer whale and his temporary tank emerged out of the plane's cargo hold. Just before noon, Icelandic time, crews transferred Keiko onto a flatbed truck for the ride overland. And then a procession very similar to the one that left the Oregon Coast Aquarium yesterday afternoon headed toward the bay Keiko now will call home. On the road that leads from the airport, you can see the procession dwarfed by the C-17's tail in the background. The Keiko caravan dipped into the town of Jaime. The streets were lined with curious Icelanders, their country and their town in the international spotlight. At exactly one o'clock in the afternoon in Iceland, Keiko was lifted onto a barge for the voyage to his new home. It took another 40 minutes before Keiko was lifted from his temporary traveling tank into the waters where he was born. The assembled crew and caretakers and onlookers cheered. Keiko at first swam somewhat lethargically, then picked up the pace, apparently becoming more comfortable by the minute. A handler played with the whale and rubbed off some of the balm applied to keep his skin moist during the long trip. It was the end of an incredible journey from Iceland to Canada to Mexico to Oregon and now home again. After Keiko arrived in Iceland, trainers would launch fish around his pen with a slingshot. Eventually, they began escorting him on long swims into the open ocean. They said Keiko would approach other orcas, but he always returned to the trainer's boat and generally sought out humans instead of his own kind. He did make a journey to Norway on his own. That's nearly a thousand miles. But once there, he was again attracted to boats and people. Keiko died of suspected pneumonia five years after his journey back to Iceland. At least one expert from the Greenland Institute of Natural Resources who studied Keiko's release said she's pessimistic about Tokate's chances after learning to hunt after 52 years of being hand-fed by humans. But there are a few key differences between Tokatai and Keiko. Tokatai was slightly older when she was captured, so she may still have already learned how to hunt and she might remember that. She also might remember her family songs. And since the plan is to rehabilitate her in an area where her family is somewhat nearby, experts say there's a chance that she could recognize their calls and be all the more determined to get back to them. And perhaps to live out her days the way she was meant to, in the wild.